All right, so this week of astrology, 29 March 2021 through 4 April 2021, we're dealing with, I think, themes of structure, the new structures of our reality. As we get into spring, further into spring, these structures that have been put into place can help support our actions. As I, as I said, as we're moving into this new spring era and this spring time, spring 2021, very exciting. Jupiter and Pisces coming up real soon. <music> Saturn, the key thing is that Saturn will sextile the Sun and Venus in Aries this week. So you're having these overcoming sextiles from Saturn at the same time uh, or just before Mercury comes into Aries and then we get this lovely mutual reception between Mercury and Mars to add even more support and more uh, power to our thinking and how our thinking can then further action Mars, Mercury, mutually supporting each other. So let's get into um, the chart a little bit and I'm just going to show you now. These are the aspects. So if we go into the specific dates this week, you've got 30 March. That is um, Wednesday and Thursday is when that Saturn uh, sextile with Venus and the Sun will happen. And remember Venus just had its Kazemi moment. It just had its final auspicious purification this cycle before it sets, dies, and then gets reborn in the underworld and then and then comes back out as a morning star. Um, this will happen actually at the end of this year. So we have all of the rest of this year with Venus in its final stage of its full flowering uh, in that night sky. We'll have that um, evening star Venus to, to look at, to uh, anchor into. I, I love that um, that evening star Venus is a way to anchor. If you see it in the sky, it's like a glowing goddess. I mean, this massive goddess. I think sometimes people can confuse it for like a spaceship or something. I mean, it's that big and bright. But it will be overseeing this year until it stations retrograde in December in Capricorn and then gets reborn. So we're, it's, it's a lovely time. Venus, remember, is a night sect planet. And so it does quite well at night. And so we have it there giving us support for night. Maybe this summer we'll have opportunities to go out and spend uh, night time out again. Everywhere I've been, things shut down at night, but maybe it'll be parties or things like that this summer. Um, so, so that just happened. And now as Venus and the sun start, I guess the sun will be, let me see, let's just get the chart up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually get the exact chart up. So as I'm talking about this, but you can see here, I um, actually need to restart my computer. Sometimes Solar Fire does this. It will give you a little bit of a... Okay, now let me, let me get it in here. Let's animate it and I will share screen. Um, here we go. So you can see there's the Sun and Venus. And so now the Sun will start moving faster. Or sorry, Venus is moving faster than the Sun. Venus is caught up to the Sun and is now getting out ahead of it. So that when the Sun sets, you have Venus there in the night sky. And you can see it here just as we animate. I mean, this is now how we're, how we're getting in here. Venus will come out of the sun's beams and be visible in Gemini later this year. So it looks like it's just around late May is when Venus will emerge. Uh, but it's part of this story this week because both Venus and the sun, even now you can see right now, Venus is still in the heart of the sun within one degrees, but they're gonna sextile Saturn. So the idea, like I said, is that there's support structures Think about the new structures in your life, the new emergence of the new reality we're in. I know I say that all the time, but it's just so true. You can't say it enough. 2020 turned the whole world upside down and now we have these new structures, new rules, new guidance, new activities, new ways businesses engage with themselves and we engage with the world and the community. That is all here now and maybe it's time to adjust. We're getting more comfortable with them and we can start planning and moving into this spring and summer, like I said taking into account the new obstacles or rules or structures that we'll have to face. Like I just saw there's a new technologies for tracking people that have come out in New York State, I think. You know, this kind of new structures, new rules about travel and when things will be open and where you can go. All of that stuff is now coming into focus. This week might be a time when it comes even into more focus. The other thing um, we have, just to go back here, at the end of the week that Mercury entering Aries on uh, next Sunday, 
early in the morning here where I am. So th I think next Sunday will be a jolt of power. The fogginess, the Mercury and Pisces, the sort of um, inaccessible thoughts or confusion hopefully dissipates here and then you have that mutual reception. Mercury may be getting um, you know, ready to act, wanting to do things, and then Mars also wanting to do more thinking energy. And so there's this synergy and this synthesis with those two energies. I'm thinking that a lot of the, the plans, to the extent they've been delayed, are now um, gonna start moving ahead. And this uh, new moon in Aries that's coming up is one of the best new moons, uh, best syzygies we've had in a long, 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 long time. I love it. Everything's in a sextile or a trine. So um, the moon this week, let's just check in. Uh, I think the best moon energy, we start the week with that Libra moon. I, it, it's just waning now because the full moon just happened here hours ago. It's a Sunday when, as I'm recording this, Sunday the 28th. Uh, but this waning Libra moon, I think is the best energy of the week. I would call that the transit of the week for my astrology because Venus is still in the heart of the sun, still within one degrees. And then there's that trine to Jupiter that the moon will make. So I love this Libra moon to start the week. Come um, Tuesday, we get, uh, let's see here, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday, by the way, I, I misspoke earlier. Venus sextile Saturn on Tuesday. Uh, the Sun sextile Saturn on Wednesday. And so on Tuesday, we'll have Ven uh, the moon will drop into Scorpio and then the moon has that gauntlet that it has to run. It's in, uh, ex it's in fall in Scorpio, then it has to conjoin the south node with Jupiter in Aquarius, its ruler, Jupiter in Aquarius. Um, that can be draining, and then it goes to its exile in Capricorn. But, you know, that Capricorn moon, you do have the strong Saturn to finish the week. Think about the, any transit through Saturn ruled signs right now, with Saturn so powerful that there is a sort of auspicious flavor to, to how Saturn can be worked with um, as the ruler of those planets. But again, this is why I like that Libra moon at the beginning of the week. You don't have to deal with some of this rougher edge and some of this tougher energy. And you get Venus with the sun, um, still getting that power from the sun. So um, here's the chart if you want to just check it out. You see here, um, this is the 29th, so it's on Monday about 8 p.m. And you have um, uh, Venus is still within that one degree range. Just You can catch it just those last moments there of Venus in the heart of the sun. The moon will make a trine to Jupiter. This is a 22 degrees Libra and Aquarius respectively, or the 23rd degree of each of those signs. So this air trine may be, a, again, a good time to do some thinking or some letter writing. Anytime I think of Libra, I think about others in connection with the air technology or the thoughts or communication. That's what Libra can be. So maybe it's a time to thank people or express gratitude somehow, um, you know, directly. So this is a, a nice energy. And, and the other thing to say about this lunar cycle, we're waning now. So even this week, when Mer as Mercury comes and mu starts uh, this mutual reception with Mars, Mercury and Aries, Mars and Gemini, we're still in a waning moon cycle. And I don't think it's until that new moon in Aries and then some of those lunar transits in really Capricorn, I think, and, and maybe... Um, Gemini, but that Cap or sorry, Cancer, that Cancer moon coming up after the next new moon is really when I think the act action phase has time to flower and grow, as waning moons always bring that that flowering energy, that growth potential. So I'm I'm, I'm thinking it, it gets sweeter, it gets sweeter, and then the moon comes and triggers this great expansion. Come, let's just look at it. Well, when we have the chart open here, sometimes I get I'm trying to talk about this week, but it's worth. Everything's in context, it's links in a chain. So some, when things get triggered, it actually projects out into future transits because they're setting up those future transits. So let's just quickly look at um, this chart. You can see what I'm referring to. The new moon here comes, uh, the new moon in Aries, and then now we have a waxing moon. The moon will be square Saturn, the moon will be with a, a north node and Mars, but this Cancer moon is the one I'm referring to. This is a great time. See how everything's in, in sextile? Um, you've got just a lot of cool aspects with this Cancer Moon. I think by this time is when we're kind of rocking and rolling and we can put everything into action. This will be in April. April, I think, is portending to be a real interesting month because then you have this triple um, conjunction in, in Taurus. So there's this Taurus energy, all of it, of course, square Aquarius. So we're, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So anyhow, that's the weekly astrology. Um, this week is 
some nice changes but setting up for later and do enjoy that mercury coming back that mercurial power coming back um, into our lives okay let's get a tarot reading let's finish this out with a tarot reading let's do um let's grab the first card let's see what the symbols are and, and my last video i did a tarot reading i, I didn't mean to do that it, it, it was great because it thematically fit but i'm trying to keep the video shorter so this little weekly summary with a tarot reading is, is I think, just long enough to work for everyone. So the first card is... The first card is... Give me a second. I love the technology, how we can just have the images, we can use the random number generators, and we can just pluck out the cards put them right here on the screen so you can see them. This is the two of hearts, the fascination card, Venus and Cancer. It's funny because I was just looking at that chart in April and you had um, Venus and Taurus and the moon in Cancer for that April Cancer moon. And I was thinking that's a lovely energy with those two night sex signs. Um, they're making the sextile and Venus overcoming the moon. So that I just would say this is what this card represents. Lovely energy. Sometimes with the two, you think two people come together, the emotions of two people. You might think about just how your Venus has been functioning with this um, fiery Venus Kazemi. Did you have, you know, a passion? Did you connect with someone? Was there blocks with sometimes the, the Aries can burn Venus and the sun can burn Venus in a way that maybe the Venusian side was sometimes the message with that is just okay Venus you're you're taking a back seat to the sun it's about this the self with the Venus and sun conjunction Venus is just it's maybe you know think about it like this when we have relationships sometimes we do need to just take the, take a break from them and focus on ourselves it actually rejuvenates the relationships that we're in when we're taking care of ourselves and getting centered and aligned I think that Venus Kazemi and Aries is can be pointing to some of that self kind of containment and for the purpose of being able to re-enter that exchange with others. So maybe consider some of those thoughts. This is the first position, maybe the recent past. Um, and yeah, so let's just get the next card. Let's see what, let's see what the God deck says. Okay. All right. So with this one, um, we are getting the all right strength it fits or force uh in, in the terra marseille it fits right in with this exact theme of the fiery venus the fiery passion and and how we can transmute that anytime i see the force or the strength card or lust as it's called in the crowley deck i think of transmutation of that desire you know we have this strong desire maybe even you know, to feel something or to connect with someone. And sometimes it's good to breathe that, breathe into that and just kind of bring it back into our own self container. And so as opposed to acting on it, that hasty action is really the risk with Venus and Aries. And now remember Venus is under the beams for the rest of this transit in Aries. Venus is not supported by the sun. It's in the sign of its exile. And I think this is pointing to, to this next little bit of Venus's time here for the next couple of weeks. You know, be careful with how hasty you behave with others, how demanding you can be to have like satiate uh, pleasures in, in a moment. These are the kind of things that Venus and Aries can, can do. Um, and if that stuff's blocked for you, remember Venus is under the beams, it's good to also just generate it in yourself. You know, that's what this strength card can be pointing to. It's the way we can generate our own fire, have relationships with ourselves. You know, there's all kinds of auto-pleasuring. Um, and I'm not talking about just sexual. I'm talking about all kinds of pleasure that we can bring ourselves within the container of who we are. That is what I think this can, can be asking us to do, especially when Venus is blocked out by being under the beams of the sun without being... Uh, in the heart of the sun. All right, so that's the weekly astrology. That's the tarot reading to support this week. Seems like the tarot saying it's all about Venus. So I'm glad we, we it pointed to this because Venus is, is, a, is still a big player in the sky and that energy is quite important. You can go to my website, sjanderson144.com. Click here to schedule a reading. You can schedule astrology and tarot readings with me. I look forward to reading for you and have a wonderful week ahead. Enjoy this moment where Mercury now is in a mutual reception with Mars, and, ev and now we don't have Saturn ruling every planet, uh, save for those lunar transits. Um, it's been a, quite a while, a few months, with Saturn being the final dispositor. That's over this week, so enjoy that.